walking off that plane to see my little girls was one of like the coolest moments for me just because I knew the importance of what this medal symbolizes. It's not just the fact that like, oh yeah, like we did it. It is like every stepping stone and hard day for that moment in time, right? And like, I think I told you the conversation I had with Maddie after we lost the gold medal game to what would have been us going against the US if we beat Japan and the tears in her eyes and the struggles of it all. And like kind of telling her, like promise her, promising her that we're gonna win a medal. Um, to be able to walk off the plane and actually bring that, because I would have been a shit mom if I didn't bring one home. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome on in to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks, and holy boats, I'm back. I was gone for, I guess, a month or like a year, a hundred years into another layer of the universe covering the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. It was the craziest trip of my life, the hardest experience of my life, the most emotional experience of my life. I cried like every single day, happy tears, sad tears, whatever kind of tears. It was just uh, a lot, but it was so incredible. I covered softball and baseball, and this is a great transition back into real life because I'm so thrilled to be able to welcome on today's guest, who is someone that I got to cover in Tokyo, and now we actually get to chat. I witnessed her make history for Canada, winning Softball Canada's first ever Olympic medal. She's a bronze medalist from the Olympics, two-time Olympian, won an NCAA title as well, but she's so much more. She's an incredible person, such a, a powerful motivator, and a wonderful mother. None other than the one and only Danielle Laurie. Congratulations on your Olympic bronze medal. I'm so, so happy for you. Thank you. This I, this has been long overdue. I feel like I've known you for years, so I'm stoked that you could fit me into your busy schedule. Oh, of course, you're number one. Look, we're back. And also, I may or may not just trying to like be Danielle Laurie right now. Still have my card. Of, Love it. Uh, not weird for a grown woman to have another grown woman's softball card. Um, but <laughs> congratulations. And I mean, okay, so when we were there, you know, we're masked, we're two meters apart. It's business. You're in the Olympics. Yeah. You're back home now. Like, how, how does everything feel a couple weeks later? I mean, very surreal still, right? Like, I think the hardest part was like leaving your teammates that you've been with for 70 plus days and just like, okay, hey, bye. Right. And then we did the medal ceremony and got to put that medal on and looking down at it. And then we didn't even get to celebrate as a team. So that was like a as amazing as that moment was when you got to like put that medal on and celebrate it. Like what I remember from 08 was that you could stay in the village and, and hang out with your team and really get to soak up the hard work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So I remember being a little bit bummed about that. But I mean, walking off that plane to see my little girls was one of like the coolest moments for me just because I knew the importance of what this medal symbolizes. It's not just the fact that like, oh yeah, like we did it. It is like every stepping stone and hard day for that moment in time, right? And like, I think I told you the conversation I had with Maddie after we lost the gold medal game to what would have been us going against the US if we beat Japan and the tears in her eyes and the struggles of it all and like, kind of telling her like promise her promising her that we're gonna win a medal um to be able to walk off the plane and actually bring that because i would have been a shit mom if i didn't bring one home <laughs> I promise. <laughs> well there's a lot of pressure then riding on that because i know that you know reading your story and just like getting to this point and everything you've sacrificed and for those of who are watching that don't know like you know you you basically left your family to be able to have to go pursue this dream for over 70 days you didn't see your kids like how did you i know your husband drew Locke did a lot of work but for you mentally and emotionally like how did you deal with that well very fortunate to be playing with women that know me so so well right like when you're in some of your hardest moments, like if you cannot be vulnerable and let people in with how you're feeling, like there's no way you're going to get through that. And it was, it was one of the most challenging 70 plus days that I've ever had to go through because it's almost like I didn't feel like I, I felt like I was their mom, but I felt so disconnected from them and from my husband because it's just like every day it's kind of like Groundhog's Day, right? We're doing the same thing. We're training, we're grinding. It's hard. 
he's working full time and, and is taking care of these kids. And we had help. We had a nanny. She was amazing. But like, it's still him getting breakfast in the morning and him getting dinner ready for the kiddos. So it it was a challenge. But my openness with Jen Salling and Kaylee Rafter and getting to live with them for the first couple months where they were able to see the tears and see the struggles, but like allowing them in to where they could say to me, like, you're never going to get this experience again in your life. Mm-hmm. You're never going to get to be away from like everything and just solely focus on being in the best possible shape and being as present as you can be for this team. And I was like, it's a really good way to look at it. Like there was a ton of mom guilt and a lot of people that would say things. So you like at times listen to that, but yeah. I was like, how cool is it that I get to fully like, just dive in and be where my feet are at and enjoy the process. Because before you know it, like wiping Audrey's ass is going to be in full effect again. And it is, it's like, now it's just done. And that's the craziest part from going from an Olympics and you're on such a high and then you come home and then all of a sudden it's just like, boom, back to it. Almost as if it didn't happen. Um, and the emotional roller coaster of that can be a lot. Yeah, I can't imagine sort of the come down from just the the pressure. Uh, and you talk about pre- pressure as a privilege, like that moment, like having this all come together. And then you come home and you have the medal and it's like you've done it and you're here and, and this is what's gone on. And, and now that you are back and, you know, we talked in the moment right after it was it was, you know, as a Canadian watching it, it was really emotional. But I'll, I'm, you know, I'm an unbiased journalist, but I'm also Canadian. So it was really cool to see you guys win. But for you watching yourself with that final out now what does it feel like i think it was probably the most proud that i've ever been in sport like honestly right it's uh, of course you want to be in that gold medal game and you want to win in a like an olympic gold medal but i mean that was our opportunity to win a medal and make history for our country we've never done that with with team canada softball and i'll be damned if we were going to come forth again like we did 13 years ago i remember that feeling and to have known that we did everything possible over the course of these four years to just come forth again hell no so it was so special like i I just felt really lucky to be the one in the moment when that last pitch was thrown but i also know like there's a big responsibility in that like when i went in in the fifth inning with runners on first and third and it was a tie ball game and there was two outs like i was like we're gonna win or lose this game and it's gonna be on me and that is a giant I'm at like I was talking to my girlfriend about it yesterday and she doesn't know much about like sports and the pressures of it, but like she was so into it and she's like, What were you feeling? And I was like, it was a good pressure to feel that because I, I no longer fear like if we were to lose or win, like I, I that, that doesn't dictate who I am, which has taken a long time to learn that, right? Because you're at times when you're in those pressure moments, it's like you're scared to lose because everyone's mm-hmm. gonna be Danielle lost. And but I chose to look at the good and how hard I've worked and how much I deserve that moment to be that one in the circle. Um, and I, I was, God, it was to be able to turn to Jen and like hug that out and just know that this grind was worth something. And to also appreciate the fact that Japan was able to allow this event to go on Mm -hmm. and the volunteers and the amount of people behind the scenes that no one knows about that make this like, for instance, a show like this, like we're the ones on here, but like with TV stuff, right? Like it's all the people behind the scenes that do so much work that almost don't get the credit. So Japan, it was one of the coolest events, even though it was a pandemic, but man, I was, I just felt really lucky to be in that position, all of it, to soak up the volunteers, to soaking up, just being in the village and seeing how it all went down. It was, it was special. Yeah, I can't even imagine, like, from your vantage point of, of having to go through that. And I remember you said after the game that when you went into the game, you weren't going to leave without a medal, mm-hmm. uh, which I felt, I was like, ooh, I need Danielle to pump me up every day uh, with that kind of powerful force. But I just got to ask you, I mean, like, none of us know what it's like to be an Olympian. Yeah. Um, what's something that we can't possibly understand about what you've gone through to get to this moment? I mean, you have to have like this weird obsession with like doing a lot of things that not not many people want to do. And you choose to do it because number one, it's pretty much all you've known, but you're trying to do it to to for your country, right? And it's like when you're when I was in college, it was for my college, but like representing your country and Canada across your chest and knowing how much that means. 
So you're doing it for something so much bigger than yourself. Um, but damn, the grind to get there is such a beautiful thing. But a lot of people have opinions about it, but they're not willing to do the grind. So that's why I always think it's so funny. But um, I mean, for our country, that's that's re realistically like, and I wanted to write a different storybook ending than 2008. Coming forth right. is it's not fun. Yeah, it's a tough one, even though you're at the Olympics. But then I understand it's a yeah. weird dynamic. There's so many more questions I want to ask you about some interesting things you know it's like pull back the curtain okay now i can ask you some things about the olympics and what an incredible ride it's been and what's to come we have a whole lot more to come with olympic bronze medalist danielle lori guys don't go anywhere this is drinks with Binks. hey i'm adnan burke and i celebrate the dodgers winning the world series with canada's finest exports since michael j fox that's right my girl julie stewart binks jsb yeah Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks with Banks. I'm JSB. We're so thrilled to be joined by Olympic bronze medalist, two-time Olympian, NCAA champion, absolute badass, Danielle Laura here on the show. We're drinking a little coffee because it's a little, or it's early and you know, we're not, you know, we're, I'm not an Olympian. She's an Olympian. She has a temple of a body to take care of. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> you, which you are awesome on, on social media with that, like just grinding it out still yeah. um but i wanted to ask you a bit more like so you win bronze a bronze medal it's a great moment um it's an interesting dynamic in a team sport when you get that medal mm -hmm. you had to watch the gold medal game and then get your medal what was that like honestly like watching japan win that and being able to be in the stands was one of the coolest moments that i've got to witness in sports as well because it's like I remember 08 and watching Wayno do the damn thing. And then 13 years later, the country, you know, Japan trying to get this Olympics because they wanted to reinstate baseball and softball and they did. And then you throw a pandemic in and you think about the added pressure that those young women are feeling like, and I've played professionally in Japan. So I know the grind and I know how hard they work. So to add another 365 days on top of their plate for this, I was like, I can't imagine how like Wayno's feeling and the coaches. Mm -hmm. feeling. Um, so getting to be in the stands and like watch how dominant she was, um, was one of the coolest things because I think that that allows and grows the game where women know that you can play well into your thirties. Like Wayno is yeah. almost 40 years old. So I will gladly hang up the cleats. But it means that like that opportunity is there for a lot of women. Softball is out for 2024 for Paris, but it's back for 2028. And there's a lot of women on our team, I think, that saw me at 34, Rafter at 35, Lauren Bay Regula at, I think she just turned 39 or 40. So it allowed for them to realize, like, even though they're still seven years away, mm -hmm. I can do this. And if it wasn't us winning the gold medal, I wanted it to be Japan because I just yeah. I know how hard they work. It's the coolest thing ever to see Wayno be that dominant at 40. Like she is a specimen. It was incredible. Yeah, it really is. And for those out there who don't know, uh, Wayno Yukiko was a starting pitcher for Japan and turned 39 during the Olympics and had won gold against USA back 13 years ago in Beijing. But so you mentioned some of these people, Kat Osterman, also 38. And um, there is some talk, though, about a couple different federations trying to get softball to Paris 2024. Uh, under this hypothetical that this box potentially gets ticked, you would only be 37, which is younger than everyone just mentioned. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy, too, because it's like, it's tough to rewrite a better story than what we just did. So it's like, I would be sadly disappointed if we didn't get a, a silver or a gold. I would probably be divorced. Um, <laughs> my husband would leave me. I'm dead serious. Someone asked me the other day, like, would you go back for a year for 2028? And I was like, no. And I go, oh, so we're answering for each other now. Is that where we're at? And he goes, don't do that to me again. <laughs> I, as much as I would love it, I feel so lucky to end the game on my terms. Mm -hmm totally close that book and to kind of jump head first into like the broadcasting with, with doing the softball stuff. Like I love it so mm -hmm. much. And 
the last four years I've had to like talk the talk and walk the walk, but now I just get to talk the talk because the walk for, you know, speaks for itself yeah. and how I wanted. So to just jump into that, be a mom, be present as much as I can, because this training for the last four years has dictated my life. Like mm-hmm. at times, like I'll put training before something that the kids need, whether it's a snack, it's like, all right, well, I need to finish this this 45 minutes and then we'll get you going. And like I said, being an Olympic athlete is like, it's an obsession with making sure you do what you need to do yeah. that the team requires. And then on top of that, it's like, okay, what do I personally need to make me feel invincible in some of the most pressure filled moments? I need to do X, Y, Z. And sometimes it takes away from, you know, people you love and the kids know I love them to death. But like, even just saying like, you learn like who your true friends are through the, throughout right. this grind. Gosh, man, hearing Olymp- Olympians speak, it's like, you guys are a whole brand of crazy that I'm like, I would never want to be an Olympian um, yeah. after the Olympics I just covered. And I always wanted to be one. And after this, I was like, oh, wait, no way. Oh, that's way too much. After the break, we want to have you hand out a couple medals for your opinion Olympics. Yeah. Um, we'll explain that in a whole lot more when we return on Drinks with Things with Danielle Laurie. Don't go anywhere, folks. Hey guys, Todd Father here, Todd Frazier. I was just on drinks with Binks. I had to rank my own brothers. This is crazy stuff. Come on, check it out. I had such a blast. Hey guys, welcome back into Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB. We've got Olympic bronze medalist Danielle Laurie here with us today. And because you just finished... An incredible Olympic outing for Team Canada winning their first ever softball medal. We wanted her to be able to hand out her own medals in Danielle Laurie's Opinion Olympics. So we are going to have gold, silver, and bronze. Let's begin, shall we? Numero uno, Canada's top Olympic athlete in 2020. Who do you give the gold, silver, and bronze to? Andre de Grasse, for sure. Like those were just, it was iconic seeing that. Um, shoot, I cannot remember the guy that won the gold medal. Um, was Damian it- Warner? Silver. Okay. Um, those two are, they, you know, it could have been either one. Okay, so photo um, finish. Photo finish. Okay, actually, I take it back. I'm going to go Team Canada Soccer Gold because that was one of the coolest moments that I've ever got to witness, and I'm dying to meet Christine Sinclair. I'm going to go DeGrasse for the silver and then um, remind me of what his name is. Warner, Damien Warner. Yeah. He's getting it. That's a great, that's a great list. I agree with that too. Team Canada soccer. That was huge. That Sorry was- to all our American coworkers and friends, but it was time for Canada to was- avenge 2012. Jeez. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of pump up songs before a game, what gets the gold, silver and bronze in your opinion, Olympics? So it's funny, you tag me on something on Instagram, and I don't know if I told you that James Taylor is like my favorite artist of all time. Like- I read it. Yes, so um, he gets the gold. I'm gonna give um, Enter Sandman. Oh, great. And I am going to give Avicii the bronze. Rest in peace. Little levels. Yeah. Yeah, it's very diverse. Um, podium right there. Okay. And <laughs> if you had to trade places with like another celebrity or another athlete, who's on your podium for gold, silver, and bronze? Dang, that's tough. Um, I think I, I would love to be Christine Sinclair. Like she's just a woman that has been doing this for so long and owns so many cool things and accolades, but not that the accolades matter, but she's just such a badass. So I'm obsessed with the women's soccer. So I'm gonna go with Christine Sinclair for the gold. I'm gonna go with Megan Rapino for the silver mm. because I just, I love how opinionated she is and she speaks her mind and, um, and for the bronze, I'm, I love seeing like Tarassi and Sue Bird win and it be their fifth Olympic medal. Cool, to boot. So I, it's a tie between those two women for me. Sorry, no dudes included. Yeah, de- well, de- obviously no dudes included. This is, a, this is just a female-only show. Um, no, I'm joking. But 
<laughs> we love everybody. Um, I'm surprised you didn't say like Lady Gaga or oh, no. the. <laughs> No, <laughs> like no, no, all the way. I mean, I would put J Derek Jeter on there, but um, yeah, I have to go with the women. Like, I would go for the women that, like, right now, I would fan girl over if I met. I like that. And all of um, them, I'm in. Well, those are very impressed. I, I think I would also like probably be starstruck around them too, because you're just like, whoa, you're so cool and powerful and amazing so you know how many uh, times i need to send it christine sinclair before she go back to me like i'm like commenting on our photos i'm sending her dm i'm getting nothing she's not biting. okay we're done well, like, we gotta make this happen i think we got it i mean no, you're no. an olympic medalist for canada she's an olympic medalist for canada you're both two badass females like friends i know i want to be Just, you will be you will tomodachi, be tomodachi they say in japan that means friends tomodachi oh okay yeah um, yes, uh, omadero gozaimasu. That means congratulations. Yes. Arigato omadero gozaimasu. Okay, well, congratulations, Danielle Lori's Opinion Olympics. We learned a lot here today on this, and we'll have a whole lot more after the break. Um, arigato gozaimasu. Subscribe to the Fubo Sports YouTube page for clips and full episodes. Follow us at Fubo Sports on all social media channels. Also available in podcast form wherever you find your favorite pods. Well, guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and thinking with Olympic medalist, just absolute badass Danielle Laura here on the show for Showback after Les Olympics in Tokyo. And Danielle, where can we find you next? What's going on? Yeah, you can find me broadcasting the Athletes Unlimited, but if you want to find me on social, I have been TikToking lately, and I'm pretty proud of my TikTok game. So Danielle Laurie 1515 on there. And then on Instagram, I'm pretty raw and real, and I dig that about social media. You can just be your authentic self um, and just Danielle Laurie 15 on there, and you can send me DMs. I'll get back to you, even though Christine Sinclair won't get back to me. I will get back to you. Congratulations again, Thank you so much for being on the show. You are such an incredible role model, you know, yeah. even for people the same age as you and that are dressed like you and probably you're gonna have a straining order from me after this, but you know what? It's been fun while it lasted and it was wonderful witnessing you create history for Canada. So thank Can you. Can I create something really quick? Yeah. Thank you to you. Like you did such an amazing job of like telling all of our stories and that is not hard, like not easy to do that. So I just think like kudos to you for being able to do that and take on that role. I know the media stuff and it is so hard, like the sleepless nights and having to deal with all of that and the prep and the work that goes into it that not a lot of people know. They only see us on there. They don't get to see you much. So me appreciating you, that's number one. So I know how hard it is and I love you to death for that because that is a grind. So thank well, you. Well, thank you. That means a lot. I wish we could have done more. But, you know, the 14-day activity plan in Japan was quite stringent. On. Yeah. And a lot of other things. Um, but I was glad to be able to put a nice light in your eyes when you were on TV. That I was like, I got to get that reflector light. Okay. No one knows what I'm talking about right now. But we also have a social media channel here on Fubo Sports. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. We have all of our episodes there. We have, like, 1,000 episodes, including this one, you can rewatch and see so many other great things. So make sure you do that. And Danielle, Erigata Gazaibas, and good luck. Cannot wait to see where you go. And guys, until next time, bottoms up, bitches. Subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all social media at Fubo Sports. <laughs>